Good day to you all, you brilliant minds. Today we delve into a right corker of a topic, the clash between diversity and merit in the workplace. Now, this isn't some polite disagreement over tea and biscuits. This is a battle royale for the soul of the modern company. In one corner, we have diversity, equity and inclusion, fighting for fairness, representation and a tapestry of voices. They want everyone to have a fair shot, regardless of their background. In the other corner, we have merit, excellence and intelligence, champions of hard work, talent and the best person for the job. They believe success should be based on ability, not background. Who will emerge victorious? Well, that's precisely what we're here to explore, so buckle up. Grab your thinking caps and prepare for a lively debate. First things first, let's define our terms, shall we? Diversity, you see, isn't just about ticking boxes. It's about embracing the wonderful kaleidoscope of human experience. We're talking about different genders, ethnicities, religions, sexual orientations, abilities, and everything in between. It's about recognizing that a rich tapestry of perspectives makes for a more vibrant and innovative team. Equity isn't about everyone getting the same thing. No, no. It's about ensuring everyone gets what they need to succeed. It's about leveling the playing field, providing equal opportunities and addressing historical disadvantages. Imagine a gardener tending to different plants, giving each what it needs to flourish. That's equity in action. And then there's inclusion. It's all well and good having a diverse group, but are they truly heard? Inclusion means creating a space where everyone feels valued, respected and empowered to contribute their unique talents. Think of it as a choir, where each voice, no matter how different, harmonises to create something beautiful. Now let's not forget about merit, excellence and intelligence. These chaps are all about pushing boundaries, striving for greatness, and rewarding those who rise to the top. Meritocracy, as it's known, argues that the best and the brightest should lead the way, regardless of their background. Excellence, my friends, is about going above and beyond, exceeding expectations, and delivering exceptional results. It's about a commitment to quality, a thirst for improvement, and a refusal to settle for mediocrity. Think Michelangelo meticulously chipping away at marble, striving for perfection in every detail of the David. And of course, we can't forget intelligence. It's about quick thinking, problem solving, and the ability to adapt and innovate. It's about using your noggin to find creative solutions and drive progress. Think of a master chess player, strategizing moves ahead, anticipating their opponent's every thought. Now, you might be wondering why this debate matters so much. Well, my friends, this isn't just some abstract philosophical discussion. This is about real lives, real opportunities, and the very fabric of our society. Throughout history, we've seen the consequences of both exclusion and unchecked elitism. From the caste system in India to the French Revolution, history is littered with examples of societies torn apart by inequality and a lack of opportunity. On the other hand, We've also seen how societies that embrace diversity and merit can thrive. The Renaissance, for example, flourished because it welcomed talent from all walks of life, regardless of social standing. The fight for civil rights, the women's suffrage movement, the dismantling of apartheid, these were all battles fought and won in the name of equality and opportunity. And yet, the struggle continues. We still see disparities in income, education and representation across all facets of society. Today's arena, the modern workplace. Fast forward to today and the battleground has shifted to the workplace. Companies are grappling with how to create a fairer, more inclusive environment while also remaining competitive in a global market. On one hand, there's a growing recognition that diversity is not just a moral imperative, but a business one. Studies have shown that diverse companies are more innovative, more profitable and better equipped to serve a global customer base. They bring fresh perspectives, challenge the status quo and drive creativity. 
On the other hand, there's a concern that focusing too much on diversity could lead to a decline in standards, a lowering of the bar, and a move away from rewarding true talent. Some argue that hiring decisions should be based solely on merit, ensuring that the most qualified candidates are selected regardless of their background. The quest for balance. Can we have it all? So, my friends, the question remains, can we have it all? Can we create a workplace that is both diverse and meritocratic? Can we embrace inclusivity without sacrificing excellence? That, my friends, is the million-dollar question. Some argue that it's a zero-sum game, that we must choose one or the other, but I believe that's a false dichotomy. I believe we can and indeed must strive for both. We need a nuanced approach, one that recognises the value of both diversity and merit and finds ways to integrate them into the very fabric of our organisations. In the next part of our journey, we'll delve deeper into this complex issue. We'll explore the arguments for and against each side, examine the evidence, and uncover the secrets to creating a workplace that is both fair and successful. Stay tuned, my friends, for The Plot Thickens. Echoes of the past, diversity's long march. Now, my friends, let's don our historian hats for a moment and take a trip down memory lane. The tussle between diversity and merit isn't a new one, you see. It's been raging for centuries, echoing through the corridors of history. From the ancient empires of Persia and Rome to the bustling trade routes of the Silk Road, diversity has always been a defining feature of human civilization. But the acceptance and celebration of that diversity? Ah, well, that's another story altogether. You see, throughout history, the pendulum has swung back and forth. Periods of openness and tolerance, where diversity was seen as a strength, have been interspersed with eras of fear and exclusion, where difference was met with suspicion and prejudice. So let's embark on a journey through time, exploring the historical context of diversity, equity and inclusion. We'll uncover the triumphs and tragedies, the lessons learned and the enduring relevance of this timeless debate. Ancient roots, inclusion in early civilizations. Let's rewind to the dawn of civilization, shall we? Contrary to what some might believe, ancient societies weren't always bastions of homogeneity. Take the Persian Empire, for example. Under Cyrus the Great, diversity wasn't just tolerated, it was actively encouraged. Cyrus understood that a thriving empire needed the talents and perspectives of all its people. He allowed conquered populations to maintain their customs and religions, creating a tapestry of cultures that stretched from the Aegean Sea to the Indus River. And then there's Rome, a melting pot of cultures and ethnicities. At its peak, the Roman Empire encompassed a staggering array of people, from Britons and Gauls to Egyptians and Syrians. While not without its flaws, Roman citizenship, with its associated rights and protections, was open to people from all corners of the empire. These ancient empires teach us a valuable lesson. Diversity, when embraced, can be a source of strength and resilience. By welcoming different perspectives and talents, these civilizations flourished, leaving an indelible mark on history. the rise and fall, when diversity thrived and didn't. Fast forward to the Islamic Golden Age, a period of unparalleled intellectual and cultural flourishing. From the 8th to the 13th centuries, the Islamic world became a beacon of knowledge. What was the secret to their success? Openness to ideas and people from different cultures. Scholars flocked to Baghdad, Cordoba and Cairo, but alas, the winds of change are fickle Empires rise and fall. The Islamic Golden Age gave way to the Renaissance, a time of renewed interest in classical learning, art and philosophy. The shadow of exclusion, lessons from history's mistakes. Let's not forget the darker side of history. For every celebrated diversity, countless instances were suppressed the Spanish Inquisition, a brutal period of religious persecution. 
Intolerance led to forced conversions, book burnings and torture. Colonialism's tragic story, European powers exploited and decimated indigenous cultures, the Holocaust, a chilling reminder of unchecked hatred. These dark chapters remind us to nurture and defend diversity. A catalyst for change, the civil rights movement, but let's not dwell on the darkness for too long, my friends. For amidst the struggles and setbacks, there have always been those who dared to dream of a better world, a world where equality and justice prevail. The 20th century, for all its turmoil, witnessed a remarkable surge in movements for social change. The civil rights movement in the United States stands as a testament to the power of collective action and the unwavering pursuit of justice. Led by visionary figures like Martin Luther King Jr., Malcolm X and Rosa Parks, the civil rights movement challenged segregation, discrimination and the systemic racism that had plagued America for far too long. Through peaceful protests, boycotts and legal challenges, they sparked a revolution of conscience, forcing America to confront its deeply ingrained prejudices. The Civil Rights Act of 1964 and the Voting Rights Act of 1965 stand as landmark achievements, outlawing discrimination based on race, colour, religion, sex or national origin. These victories were hard won, earned through the blood, sweat and tears of countless individuals who dared to stand up for what is right. Breaking Barriers, Women's Suffrage and Beyond. And speaking of fighting for what is right, let's not forget the tireless efforts of the women's suffrage movement. For centuries, women had been denied basic rights, relegated to the domestic sphere, and denied a voice in the political process. But from the Seneca Falls Convention in 1848 to the final ratification of the 19th Amendment in 1920, women in the United States and around the world organized, protested and challenged the status quo. They endured ridicule, imprisonment and even violence in their quest for equality. The fight for women's rights didn't end with suffrage, of course. The movement for gender equality continues to this day tackling issues like equal pay, reproductive rights and representation in leadership positions. But the suffrage movement serves as a powerful reminder that change is possible, that even deeply entrenched systems of oppression can be dismantled through persistence and collective action. The global stage, diversity's triumphs and challenges. The fight for the diversity and inclusion is a global movement. From dismantling apartheid in South Africa to the LGBTQ plus rights movement gaining momentum, people are raising their voices for dignity and respect. Yet conflict and prejudice persist. Let us honour those who fought for justice. The pursuit of diversity and inclusion is an ongoing journey. Now, my friends, let's turn our attention to the other side of the coin. Merit, excellence and intelligence. These concepts, much like a fine wine, have a rich history, their roots winding back through the annals of time. You see, the pursuit of excellence is woven into the very fabric of human civilization. From the earliest hunter-gatherers who relied on skill and cunning to survive, to the great thinkers and innovators who shaped our world, humanity has always striven for greatness. It's in our DNA, you see, this desire to push boundaries, to test our limits, to leave our mark on the world. And throughout history, Different societies have developed their own systems and structures for recognizing, rewarding and cultivating merit. So let's embark on a journey through time, exploring the historical context of merit-based systems, their evolution, their impact and the enduring lessons they offer us today. Let's begin in the ancient world where merit meant life or death, glory or obscurity. Take the gladiatorial arenas of Rome. These weren't just spectacles of bloodlust, they were brutal tests of skill and courage. Gladiators fought for survival and freedom, the adoration of the crowd and a place in legend. Their merit was their path to a better life, but merit wasn't confined to the arena. 
In Athens, philosophers like Socrates, Plato and Aristotle engaged in debates, their intellects clashing like swords. Their ideas laid the foundation for Western philosophy and continue to shape our thinking today. As civilizations evolved, so too did their systems for identifying and rewarding merit. In ancient China, for example, the imperial examination system emerged as a way to select the most qualified candidates for government positions. These exams, which tested knowledge of Confucian classics, history, literature and calligraphy, were notoriously difficult. But they provided a path for upward mobility based on intellectual ability, not social status. This system, while not without its flaws, helped to ensure a competent and educated bureaucracy, contributing to China's stability and longevity. Across the world, in the Islamic Golden Age, scholarship and intellectual achievement were highly prized. Scholars from diverse backgrounds flocked to centers of learning like Baghdad and Cordoba, drawn by the pursuit of knowledge and the patronage of rulers who recognized the value of intellectual merit the Islamic world, during this period, made significant advancements in mathematics, astronomy, medicine and other fields, fueled by a culture that celebrated intellectual curiosity and rewarded academic excellence. A Western tradition, Enlightenment ideals and the pursuit of knowledge. Fast forward to the European Enlightenment, and we see the ideals of reason, individualism and progress taking centre stage. Thinkers like John Locke, Jean-Jacques Rousseau and Immanuel Kant emphasised the importance of education, individual liberty and equality of opportunity. This emphasis on individual merit, on the idea that one's station in life should be determined by ability rather than birthright, helped to pave the way for revolutions in America and France. It also led to the rise of public education systems designed to provide everyone, regardless of their background, with the opportunity to develop their talents and contribute to society. Universities, once the exclusive domain of the elite, gradually opened their doors to students from all walks of life, their admissions based increasingly on academic merit rather than social standing. This shift towards merit-based selection, while not without its challenges, helped to fuel scientific discovery, technological innovation and artistic creativity. The double-edged sword. Merit's potential for exclusion. But let's not get carried away by this narrative of progress, my friends. While the pursuit of merit has undoubtedly driven human advancement, it has also at times been used to justify inequality and exclusion. You see, inherent in the concept of meritocracy is the idea of competition, of winners and losers. And while competition can be a powerful motivator, it can also create a system where those who start with advantages, whether it's access to better education, family connections, or simply the benefit of historical privilege, are more likely to succeed. This can lead to a self-perpetuating cycle where those at the top maintain their position not necessarily through superior talent or effort, but through a system that favours the already privileged. And those who face systemic barriers, whether it's poverty, discrimination or lack of access to opportunity, may find it impossible to compete on a level playing field, their potential stifled before it can even be realised. When merit becomes elitist, lessons from history's missteps. History is littered with examples of merit-based systems gone awry. Take, for instance, the French Revolution, which, despite its lofty ideals of liberty, equality and fraternity, ultimately descended into chaos and bloodshed. The revolutionaries, initially united in their opposition to the monarchy and the aristocracy, soon turned on each other. The reign of terror, a period of extreme violence and political repression saw those deemed enemies of the revolution, often based on flimsy accusations or simply for belonging to the wrong social class, imprisoned or executed. 
The French Revolution serves as a cautionary tale, a reminder that even the most well-intentioned attempts to create a more just and equitable society can go astray when merit becomes synonymous with a narrow definition of worthiness, excluding those who don't fit the mould. Similarly, the Industrial Revolution, for all its technological advancements and economic progress, created vast disparities in wealth and opportunity. While some benefited immensely from the rise of factories and mass production, many workers, including women and children, endured harsh working conditions, low wages and limited social mobility. The Balancing Act merits role in a diverse world. So, my friends, we arrive at a crossroads. We've seen the power of merit, its ability to drive innovation, reward hard work and elevate the best and brightest, but we've also witnessed its potential for exclusion, its tendency to perpetuate existing inequalities and its susceptibility to manipulation by those in power. The question then becomes, how do we harness the power of merit while mitigating its potential pitfalls? How do we create a system that is both fair and effective, one that rewards talent and hard work, while also ensuring that everyone has a genuine opportunity to succeed? That, my friends, is the challenge of our time. And as we'll explore in the next part of our journey, it's a challenge that requires us to think critically about the very nature of merit, to confront our own biases and to find creative solutions that balance the pursuit of excellence with the imperative of inclusion. The interplay, when worlds collide. Right then, my friends, let's roll up our sleeves and delve into the heart of the matter. The interplay between diversity and merit. It's a bit like mixing oil and water, some might say. They seem incompatible, destined to clash. But is that truly the case? You see, for too long, this debate has been framed as a zero-sum game, a battle between two opposing forces. But what if, just what if, there's a way to harmonize these seemingly disparate concepts? What if, instead of viewing them as adversaries, we see them as complementary forces, each enhancing the other? Now, I know what you're thinking. That's all well and good in theory, old boy. But how does it play out in the real world? Well, my friends, that's precisely what we're here to explore. So, put on your thinking caps and let's dive into the evidence, shall we? A question of balance. Can diversity and merit coexist? The million dollar question, the crux of the biscuit if you will, can diversity and merit truly coexist? Can we create a workplace that values both the richness of human experience and the pursuit of excellence? Some argue that it's a delicate balancing act, a tightrope walk where one misstep could send the whole thing crashing down. They worry that focusing too much on diversity will lead to a lowering of standards, a sacrifice of quality in the name of representation. Others contend that a singular focus on merit without addressing systemic barriers and unconscious biases will only perpetuate existing inequalities, creating a system where the privileged few continue to reap the rewards while others are left behind. So who's right? Well, my friends, as with most things in life, the answer lies somewhere in the nuanced middle. The case for diversity, a symphony of perspectives. Let's start by examining the case for diversity. Proponents argue that a diverse workforce brings a wealth of benefits, not just in terms of social justice, but also for a company's bottom line. Imagine, if you will, an orchestra composed solely of violins. Now, violins are lovely instruments, no doubt, but a symphony requires a variety of instruments, each contributing its unique voice to create a harmonious whole. Similarly, a diverse workforce brings together individuals with different backgrounds, experiences, perspectives and ways of thinking. This diversity of thought, this clash of ideas, can be a powerful engine for innovation, problem-solving and creativity. When people from different walks of life come together, they challenge each other's assumptions, question the status quo and come up with novel solutions that wouldn't have been possible in a homogeneous group.
Now, some might dismiss this as touchy-feely idealism, but the data tells a different story. Numerous studies have shown a strong correlation between diversity and business performance. A 2015 McKinsey report, Diversity Matters, found that companies in the top quartile for racial and ethnic diversity were 35% more likely to have financial returns above their respective national industry medians. Another study, conducted by Boston Consulting Group in 2018, found that companies with above average diversity on their management teams reported innovation revenue that was 19 percentage points higher than that of companies with below average leadership diversity. These findings suggest that diversity isn't just a box to be ticked, it's a smart business strategy. Companies that embrace diversity are better equipped to understand and serve a global customer base, attract top talent and foster a culture of innovation. Now let's give the other side its due. Proponents of meritocracy argue that a system that rewards excellence, hard work and talent is essential for driving innovation, progress and economic growth. They contend that when individuals are judged based on their abilities and contributions, rather than their background or identity, it creates a level playing field where the best and brightest can rise to the top. This in turn benefits society as a whole as it leads to the development of new technologies cures for diseases, and solutions to pressing global challenges. Think of the countless scientists, engineers, entrepreneurs and artists who have pushed the boundaries of human knowledge and creativity, driven by a passion for their work and a desire to make a difference. A meritocratic system, they argue, provides the framework for such individuals to flourish, to reach their full potential and to contribute to the betterment of humanity. However, and this is a crucial caveat, a purely meritocratic system, one that ignores the realities of systemic inequality and unconscious bias, can actually stifle innovation and perpetuate existing power structures. You see, my friends, the concept of merit itself is often subjective, shaped by cultural norms, societal expectations, and yes, even prejudice. What one person considers meritorious, another may overlook or dismiss, simply because it doesn't fit their preconceived notions of what success or talent should look like. This is where unconscious bias comes into play. We all have biases, my friends, whether we're aware of them or not. These biases, often rooted in our upbringing, our experiences and the messages we've internalised from society, can influence our perceptions, our judgments and, yes, even our hiring decisions. The danger is that these biases can create a self-perpetuating cycle, where those who fit a certain mould, often those from privileged backgrounds, are more likely to be recognised as meritorious, while others, despite their talent and hard work, are overlooked or underestimated. Finding the sweet spot, hybrid approaches and best practices. So, how do we square the circle? How do we create a system that values both diversity and merit, recognising the importance of representation while also rewarding excellence? Well, my friends, it requires a nuanced approach, one that acknowledges the complexities and challenges while striving for a more equitable and just outcome. One promising avenue is the development of hybrid approaches that combine elements of both diversity initiatives and merit-based selection processes. This might involve blind recruitment processes, removing identifying information from resumes such as names, genders and universities attended to reduce the influence of unconscious bias in the initial screening stage. Diverse hiring panels, ensuring that interview panels are composed of individuals from different backgrounds and with different perspectives to mitigate the impact of individual biases. Structured interviews, using standardised questions and evaluation criteria to ensure that all candidates are assessed fairly and consistently regardless of their background. Mentorship and sponsorship programmes, 
providing individuals from underrepresented groups with the support and guidance they need to navigate the workplace, advance their careers and reach their full potential. A new paradigm, reimagining merit for the 21st century. But perhaps, my friends, we need to go even further. Perhaps it's time to reimagine the very concept of merit, to challenge our assumptions about what constitutes talent, ability and potential. For too long, merit has been narrowly defined, often reflecting the values and priorities of those in power. It's time to broaden our definition to recognize the value of different skill sets, experiences and perspectives. This means looking beyond traditional markers of success such as academic credentials from elite institutions or years of experience in a particular field. It means recognizing the value of soft skills such as communication, collaboration, empathy and cultural intelligence. It means valuing diversity of thought Recognising that innovation often comes from unexpected places, from those who dare to challenge the status quo and bring fresh perspectives to old problems. In essence, my friends, it's about creating a system that is not just fair, but also wise. One that recognises that true merit lies not just in individual achievement, but also in our collective ability to harness the full potential of all members of society. And that, my friends, is a goal worth striving for. Now, my friends, imagine, if you will, a rather comical scenario. Picture diversity and merit as two rather opinionated chaps, say, sitting down for a spot of tea and biscuits. Diversity, a charming fellow with a twinkle in his eye, might say, Now look here, merit, old chap, it's all well and good wanting the best and brightest, but you can't just keep inviting the same old chaps to the party, can you? A bit of variety never hurt anyone. Merit, adjusting his monocle with a sniff, might retort, well, diversity, dear boy, I appreciate the sentiment, but we can't just hand out positions willy-nilly. Standards must be maintained, you see. A symphony orchestra needs a virtuoso violinist, not just someone who likes the colour of the instrument. And so it goes back and forth, a humorous clash of perspectives. But like any good comedy duo, beneath the banter lies a deeper truth, a recognition that they actually need each other to create something truly special. On the surface, my friends, diversity and merit might seem like polar opposites. One champions fairness, representation and a kaleidoscope of voices. The other prioritises talent, hard work and the relentless pursuit of excellence. Diversity argues that everyone deserves a fair shot, regardless of their background, believing that a rich tapestry of perspectives leads to greater innovation and problem solving. Merit, however, emphasises that success shouldn't be a participation trophy, that positions should be earned through demonstrated ability and a commitment to excellence. It's tempting, isn't it, to see these two philosophies as locked in an eternal struggle. But what if, and bear with me here, what if we've been looking at it all wrong? What if, instead of choosing sides, we find a way to weave these two strands together, creating a stronger, more vibrant tapestry? Imagine, if you will, a world where only one note was played, one colour painted, one story told. Dreary, wouldn't you say? A bit like a dinner party with only boiled potatoes, no gravy, no salt, no pepper. A purely meritocratic system, while admirable in its pursuit of excellence, risks creating just such a monochrome world. Without the vibrancy and challenge that diversity brings, such a system can become stagnant, a closed loop echoing the same ideas and perspectives. Similarly, a focus on diversity without a commitment to excellence risks becoming an empty gesture, a box-ticking exercise that fails to unlock the true potential of a diverse workforce. It's like having a magnificent spice rack, but never using the spices. What a waste. Quotas and quality. A slippery slope or a necessary nudge are quotas. The very word sparks debate, doesn't it? Some see them as a necessary tool for levelling the playing field, for forcing companies to confront their biases and create opportunities for underrepresented groups. Others, however, view quotas with suspicion, 
worrying that they lead to tokenism, a lowering of standards and the appointment of individuals based on demographics rather than merit. It's a slippery slope, they cry. Next thing you know, we'll be hiring chimpanzees to meet diversity targets. Now, while I appreciate a good chimpanzee tea party as much as the next fellow, I do understand the concern. The key, my friends, is to approach quotas thoughtfully, not as a blunt instrument, but as part of a broader strategy to address systemic barriers and create a more equitable playing field. Finding the fusion, where diversity fuels merit. Now let's move beyond the either or and explore the delicious possibilities of both and. You see, diversity and merit aren't mutually exclusive. In fact, they can and often do complement and enhance each other. Think of it like this, diversity with its array of perspectives, experiences and ways of thinking provides the raw ingredients for innovation and problem solving. Merit, with its emphasis on excellence, hard work and continuous improvement, provides the tools and the framework for transforming those raw ingredients into something truly extraordinary. When a company fosters a culture that values both diversity and merit, it creates a virtuous cycle. Diversity of thought leads to better ideas, which when nurtured in an environment that demands excellence, result in better products, services, and solutions. Case studies in harmony, companies getting it right. Now, you're likely thinking, that all sounds lovely in theory, old boy, but show me the proof in the pudding. Well, my friends, let's have a look at some real-world examples of companies that are successfully weaving diversity and merit into the very fabric of their organisations. Take Google, for example. They've been very public about their commitment to diversity and inclusion, and while they still have work to do, they've made significant strides in diversifying their workforce and creating a more inclusive culture. And guess what? Their financial performance and innovation track record remain as strong as ever. Then there's Salesforce, a company that has consistently ranked among the best places to work for diversity. They've implemented a number of initiatives, including inclusive hiring practices, employee resource groups, and unconscious bias training, to create a workplace where everyone feels valued and respected. And their bottom line? Well, let's just say they're not doing too shabbily either. These examples, my friends, demonstrate that it is possible to create a workplace that is both diverse and meritocratic, a place where everyone has the opportunity to thrive and contribute their unique talents. A practical toolkit, bridging the gap one step at a time. Now let's get down to brass tacks, shall we? Creating a workplace that truly values both diversity and merit requires more than just good intentions. It requires a proactive, multifaceted approach, one that addresses systemic barriers, challenges unconscious biases, and fosters a culture of inclusion. Here are a few practical steps companies can take. Implement blind recruitment processes. Removing identifying information from resumes in the initial screening stage can help reduce the influence of unconscious bias. Asterisk, diversify hiring panels. Ensuring that interview panels are composed of individuals from different backgrounds and with different perspectives can help mitigate the impact of individual biases. Provide unconscious bias training. Educating employees about unconscious bias and its impact on decision-making can help create a more aware and inclusive workplace. Establish mentorship and sponsorship programs. Pairing employees from underrepresented groups with senior leaders can provide valuable guidance, support and networking opportunities. Foster a culture of inclusion. This involves creating an environment where everyone feels valued, respected and empowered to contribute their unique talents. The hybrid advantage, why balance is best. In the end, my friends, it's not about choosing sides. It's about finding the sweet spot, the harmonious balance between diversity and merit, 
Companies that embrace this hybrid approach that recognize the interconnectedness of these two seemingly disparate concepts will be the ones that thrive in the 21st century. They'll be the ones attracting top talent, driving innovation and creating a more just and equitable world. And who knows, they might even have a bit of fun along the way. Now let's move on to our final thoughts on this fascinating topic. The verdict is in, a balanced perspective. Well, my friends, we've reached the summit of our intellectual climb, surveyed the vast landscape of diversity and merit. And what have we learned? Have we found the magic formula, the definitive answer to this age-old dilemma? The truth is, there's no easy solution, no one-size-fits-all approach. The interplay between diversity and merit is complex, nuanced and constantly evolving. But one thing is clear, a balanced perspective is essential. We cannot ignore the moral imperative of creating a more just and equitable workplace, one that embraces the richness and value of human diversity in all its forms. Nor can we dismiss the importance of merit, of striving for excellence, of recognising and rewarding talent and hard work. Beyond the binary, Embracing complexity and nuance. The real challenge, my friends, lies in moving beyond the simplistic binary of diversity versus merit. It's about recognizing that these two concepts are not mutually exclusive, but rather two sides of the same coin. It's about acknowledging that a truly successful and innovative workplace requires both. The richness of perspectives, experiences, and ideas that diversity brings, and the drive for excellence, the commitment to quality and the recognition of individual talent that a meritocratic system encourages. It's about understanding that true merit is not a fixed objective quality, but rather a multifaceted concept that encompasses a wide range of skills, experiences and perspectives. A call to action, building a better workplace together. So. Where do we go from here? What can we, as individuals and as organisations, do to create a workplace that truly values both diversity and merit? First and foremost, we must be willing to have honest conversations about these issues, to challenge our own biases, and to listen to and learn from those with different perspectives. We must be proactive in implementing policies and practices that promote diversity and inclusion from blind recruitment processes to mentorship programs to unconscious bias training. And we must foster a culture of respect, empathy and understanding, where everyone feels valued, heard and empowered to contribute their unique talents. The Power of Partnership, M. Joga, Coaching and Consulting. Navigating the complexities of the modern workplace, my friends, can be a daunting task. That's where a trusted partner can make all the difference. And that's where Mjoga coaching and consulting comes in. We understand the challenges and opportunities that come with building a diverse and high-performing workforce. Our team of experienced coach and consultants provides tailored solutions to help organizations develop and implement effective diversity and inclusion strategies, create inclusive hiring and promotion processes, provide unconscious bias training and awareness programs, and foster a culture of respect, belonging, and collaboration. We believe that everyone deserves the opportunity to thrive in the workplace, regardless of their background or identity and we're passionate about helping organisations create an environment where diversity is celebrated, merit is rewarded, and everyone has the chance to reach their full potential. Your journey to excellence. A complimentary breakthrough call awaits. Are you ready to take your organisation to the next level? To create a workplace that is both diverse and high-performing? We invite you to book a complimentary career breakthrough call with our expert coach, Dr. Joga. During this call, we'll discuss your organization's unique challenges and goals, explore strategies for promoting diversity and inclusion, and identify opportunities for growth and improvement. 
Don't miss this opportunity to gain valuable insights and take a step towards creating a more equitable and successful workplace. A final thought, wisdom from the ages. As we conclude our exploration, let us remember the words of the great philosopher Socrates. The unexamined life is not worth living. Let us continue to examine our own biases, challenge our assumptions, and strive to create a world where diversity is celebrated, merit is rewarded, and everyone has the opportunity to shine. Thank you for joining us on this journey, my friends. Remember, the pursuit of a more just and equitable workplace is an ongoing journey, one that requires constant vigilance, unwavering commitment, and a belief in the power of human connection. Until next time, keep those minds sharp and those hearts open.